I want to start by telling you about Marie. Marie is a woman miner, based in the eastern part of the Congo. This part is well known for providing the world with a lot of minerals. Gold, diamonds, cobalt, coton, and so much more. Marie, on her way to work, fears being attacked for her money or her hard-earned minerals. And unfortunately, she also faces sexual and gender-based violence because she is a woman. If nothing changes on the situation of Marie, she will be facing these issues for the next weeks, months, years, and maybe even generations. I also want to tell you the story about a young boy who recently went viral. This picture of him mining cobalt in the same region as Marie works was shared by many around me, trying to showcase or let us see how bad it is that a kid yet again is being photographed in a mine instead of a school. While these two examples are not mine personally, I'm invested. With my roots in Rwanda, the Great Lakes region of Africa, also hosting the Democratic Republic of Congo, Uganda and Burundi, also known for providing the world with so-called conflict minerals. It's not just my work, it also, it's also part of me. These issues that I'm addressing today are not new. The problem is, is that these problems have still not been addressed, and that's why it is important for me to address them again. How rough for those people over there, I hear you thinking. But what does this have to do with me? Or even, what does this have to do with the energy transition? Well, let me explain. You don't have to have roots in a mineral-rich country to be concerned with or possibly be linked to human rights abuses. Minerals and metals are intertwined in our everyday life. You're currently looking at it, you're holding it, you're living in it, riding it. It is the tantalum that keeps your laptop and phone running all day. It is that copper in your house, in your microwaves that ensures heat. It is that golden diamond ring that you got from your partner or are still waiting to receive. Minerals and metals are everywhere. Minerals and metals are also the basis of the energy transition, the solar panels, the windmills, and batteries for electric cars. Aren't these green and renewable energy sources the solution to a more sustainable world? In, in, in the sense of CO2 reduction, yes. They are less polluting than our gas houses or our cars that are fueled by gas also. So I'm doing something right by driving a Tesla, one person then once asked me. And I understand that question, because believe me, when I see a Tesla passing by, I'm also like, mm-mm, what a sexy car. <laughs> but that car and many other electric cars are going to increase the demand of that cobalt mineral that that young boy was mining when he got photographed and went viral. So how then? do we address climate change? Or rather, do we stick to our coal, gas, and oil that is melting away our planet? I shall answer this by bringing you back to last year and giving you some examples. Last year, I went to visit my grandma in the outskirts of Rwanda, where she resides. For more than 85 years, she has been living off of beans, sweet potatoes, maize that she plants seasonally on her own piece of land. But when I was there, she attended me on the fact that climate change, temperature rising, seasons changing, had, had made it unpredictable for her whether she was going to be able to harvest enough sweet potatoes and beans to feed herself that season. Also, that same year, in the Netherlands, we had a summer day to reach over 40 degrees Celsius in a country with a summer average of about 20 degrees. This to illustrate that climate change is not just an issue that is felt here in the Netherlands. Climate change is an issue of everyone. It is a real undisputed priority to be taken seriously. While addressing climate change is not what I'm trying to debate today, it is the how, specifically with regards to the energy transition and the minerals we need for it. 
The systems in which some are providers of natural resources and receivers of abuses, human rights abuses, while others are enjoying the products and services made possible by these natural resources, should stop. I shall repeat myself again. The systems in which some are providers of natural resources and receivers of negative impacts, while others are enjoying the products and services made possible by these resources, should stop. And now, as we are at the beginning, at the starting point of the energy transition, it's time to do it right. As you might have been imagining now, I'm trying to say that our renewable energy sources are going to need and demand a lot of minerals. The World Bank estimates that we will need over 3 billion re newly mined minerals to meet our climate change goals for solar panels, windmills, and batteries for electric cars. This two, 3 billion tons of minerals and metals equals about 300,000 Eiffel Towers, for your imagination. What we don't want is the mining of these minerals to exacerbate existing human rights abuses or create new ones. We must go beyond just the reduction of CO2 and ensure that human rights are also at the core of our sustainable solutions. Sustainability should go beyond our own front door because we don't want our sustainable solutions to be linked to violence against women, child labor, or killings. Thankfully, there are also developments happening. Conflict minerals like tin, tungsten, and tantalum have been recognized by law in the USA and in Europe, and that these laws demand that the mining and selling of, of these four minerals uh, uh, is done by companies and ensures that there are no human rights abuses linked to it. And just like I touched upon, it was just these four minerals. But there are more minerals than these four that are linked to human rights abuses. But why don't these countries do something about this themselves? Why do we have to care? I think it is our business to care especially if our products, our renewable, sustainable products are made possible by minerals that are mined elsewhere and possibly causing harm. It should not be up for discussion that we make it our mission to respect human rights beyond our own borders. Internationally, there are voluntary guidelines to respect human rights, but unfortunately, most of these are not binding. It should not be up for companies to choose whether they want to or they can afford to respect human rights. It should be a must. It should be up to governments to demand it, demand it with legislation on national, regional, and international level. When we respect human rights, women rights, worldwide, we foster better relationships that are crucial for the creation of a sustainable world. Using minerals that are sourced and sold in a responsible way will create opportunities for everybody to enjoy a greener and less polluting energy sources without blood on their hands. How nice would it be if you could be able to drive that sexy Tesla one day without feeling any sort of guilt? By changing our extractivist way, we can move towards the realization of a truly green and sustainable world in which climate change is addressed, women are valued contributors to society, children are playing outside and enjoying education. For you and I, it is important that we stay critical. Critical about ourselves, our overconsumption, our companies and our governments. We need to demand that our products are not only sustainable, but also fair. It is not one person or one company or one nation's responsibility. It is all our responsibility. Like Nelson Mandela said, it seems impossible until it's done. So let's meet again in a future that is not only sustainable at the surface, but is sustainable at its core. For many and not just for some. Thank you very much.